Hi and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today we're taking a look at a new model from Praesidus that will be launching on Kickstarter soon. Praesidus does their take on vintage military watches, Type A11 to be more exact, also known as the watch that won the World War II. A11 is just the name of the military spec that was used for production of watches for the US and even UK military during World War II. And brands that historically made these watches were Bulova, Elgin and Waltham, to name a few. These original watches had a 32mm diameter which is way too small for today. So Praesidus upped the size to still reasonable and vintage feeling 38. Thanks to a short lug to lug of 45mm, it will look good on even the smallest of wrists, while a bigger wrist will make it look even more vintage. The previous model was offered in three sizes, 38 and 42 for automatic models and 40mm for a quartz version. This one, called Vince Speranza after a World War II veteran who is also an ambassador of the brand, is offered only in 38 and, unlike the first model, comes with a double domed sapphire crystal that keeps a vintage acrylic look while giving scratch resistance we're used to on modern watches, so best of both worlds. The design of both the case and dial is pretty true to the original, with only the cathedral hands being an original take on the design. The case and hands are bead blasted and finished, with only the tops of the lugs and the crown having a polished finish. Overall the look is very classical, timeless and quite legible. The only time legibility suffers is during night time. And that brings me to the one thing I would change about the watch. The loom on the numerals is brilliant white and glows quite well in green once you enter a dark room. But the hands with their sand colored faux patina loom are nowhere nearly as bright as the numerals despite having a lot more loom applied. Not to mention the two colors clash with each other. I would have loomed the hands in the same white colored loom as the numerals to not only make a more cohesive design but also make them more legible. Or if they really wanted a faux patina look, they should have used the same sand colored loom for the dial as well. Well actually not this loom as this is one of the worst sand colored looms I have seen when it comes to brightness. They should have sourced their loom from Orient, as the Kamasu I recently reviewed showed you can have faux patima loom glow just as bright as regular loom, if not brighter. Either way, going completely one way or the other would have made a better look, rather than mixing the two together like they did. But that is just my opinion. What I do like is the fact that they left out the branding and any information off the dial just like on the original watches of the time. The branding and all the information about the watch is placed on the closed case back that even features a sunken model of a bullet, which to my surprise doesn't dig into my wrist nor do I feel it while wearing the watch, despite me fearing that will happen after I first saw it. The leather strap is made to mimic a barrel of the machine gun Vince Speranza operated during the war, which is why it has these holes and a weird looking end. It is one of two straps you get with the watch that will be all packaged in a real cigar humidor, which is a nice detail. The strap itself is quite thick but supple and feels very high quality. The watch is powered by an automatic Seiko NH35 movement or a Swiss made STP 111, depending on your preference, with naturally a difference in price. If you join their Kickstarter campaign, the Seiko powered one, like the one I'm currently holding, will cost 275 US dollars, while the STP powered one will cost 450. Once the Kickstarter campaign ends, the prices will go up substantially, with the Seiko one going at 450 and the STP one 650. These prices are okay in the Kickstarter phase, but retail is quite high for what you get. The reason for such a high price is that all of these are assembled in the US, and a part of each sale gets donated to army veteran organizations.
This might not mean a lot to us who are not from the US and we most likely will try to get them at Kickstarter prices. But if you're in the US and feel like supporting your economy and veterans, I guess the price can be seen as a donation and a watch, so you might not find it too high. Overall, I like the look and feel of this watch, as I'm a vintage watch lover, and if they made the changes I mentioned about the loom, I would gladly add the Seiko powered one to my collection. But at Kickstarter prices, that you can actually reserve for a price of $1 on their webpage. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and until the next video, bye.